welcome back so this will be a follow-up video to the one I, I just recorded previously that was on the fuel pump hanger overview and that was actually received pretty well surprisingly enough i've gotten a lot of uh, positive feedback and i've also got a ton of questions from guys asking if there is a specific way that i recommend uh, wiring up the, the fuel hanger and wiring up the pumps and this is exactly what this video will be about uh, again this is you know this video will cover the way that i recommend having everything set up if you have a you know if you have a different way that you perf would prefer to do so again it's your car feel free to do so uh, if uh, your car is getting built by a shop if they uh, you know if they want to wire things up differently uh, by all means let them do that as well i'm not saying that this is the proper way i'm saying uh, that this is the way i would prefer to do and uh, works and it's reliable and you also retain most of the ecu functions with this approach uh, another thing i want to say is that if you're not comfortable with wiring things up if you're not comfortable with uh, electronics uh, please feel you know find somebody who is and uh, let them do the work because the uh, fuel system is a very important part of the car not only that you want to make sure that everything is wired in a safe manner and you don't have any kind of mishaps later on uh, so without any further ado um the way I uh, recommend wiring up your fuel uh, fuel pumps is uh, with a relay that looks like that. The reason I'm showing this relay is because this is the one I had in stock in my shop. And this is not the exact relay that I would recommend for the, uh, for the application. Uh, but what I will do is I'll find it on Amazon and I will uh, post a link in the description so that you guys know exactly what, uh, what relay I would recommend for for this job so but in any case the the relay that you will find it looks very similar to this it's uh has it says songle on it i'm not sure if that's the company or you know brand or whatever that is uh but anyway it's gonna look pretty much almost identical to this one there are small variations between all of those relays you can read all about that in the descriptions on the website uh, the primary uh, difference in the relay that I will post is the uh, these terminals up here up top. They will have a slightly uh, different connection type. They will have uh, this one has a kind of like a hole for the uh, stripped wire to get inserted into and then being uh, held in by these bolts. Uh, the relay that I will post it has a almost the same thing, but it has little terminal posts with a uh, with a nut that you can install these. Uh, ring terminals onto it's just a little uh, more secure way of doing the uh the wiring the installation it's also a little cleaner way but most importantly it lets you uh, use heavier gauge wire on these connections and that's exactly what you want in this um, in these high current setups so but again the relay that you will see on amazon it's pretty much 95 percent identical to this one <clears throat> so uh the best way to kind of i think to uh talk about this is to uh, uh separate this relay into two parts the high current part and the low current activation uh from your uh, from your car's ignition system and from your ecu so uh up top this side of the uh, relay box will have these six connectors they will be marked com2 no2 and c2 and then COM1, NO1, and C1. Uh, these connectors will be used to operate your, fu your fuel pumps, your primary pump with NO1 and your secondary pump with NO2. So first and foremost, what you're gonna do is you will connect a battery, uh, probably a 12 gauge wire at least, because that's, uh, that's the recommended uh, wire thickness for that um, for that application you will connect a battery cable directly from battery positive terminal to com1 and another uh, battery cable directly from battery positive terminal to com2 uh, you will also connect your fuel pumps uh, positive cable to no1 and if your fuel pumps, the second, the staged fuel pumps positive cable to NO2, you will not be using NC2 and NC1 connection. So why is that? So uh, basically the COM2 
and COM1, that's that's where all of the supply voltage comes in. Uh, usually when everything is off and when the car is off, there is no current coming in from any of these uh, connectors. COM1 will be connected to NC1. NC stands for normally closed. So normally with no current applied to uh, to the activation terminals, COM1 will be mated to NC1, normally closed. So this circuit right now is closed. Uh, on the other side, COM2 will be, uh, right now will be closed with NC2 terminals. So basically this circuit is closed right now. We do not want to use these terminals because uh, when the car is off, we also want circuits broken. We don't want um, we don't want our pumps to be running. So we will what we will do is uh, connect the pumps to NO1, which is normally open circuit. Normally open, it means no activation voltage is supplied. So this circuit right now is open. There is no continuity between these two. Uh, likewise, there is no connect continuity between these two when the car is off and no triggers are activated. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'm not the best teacher, I know that. If it doesn't make sense, uh, you can uh, find all of these diagrams and the uh, forum posts um, on Google. Just search it up. A lot of guys who run Arduinos and robotics, they, uh, they use these relays and maybe uh, uh, the forum visuals will help you out a little better. <clears throat> On the and again on this side of the relay, you want to use uh, about 12 gauge wire, uh, copper wire that's going to be sufficient, I think. Uh, so yeah, so please use something heavier. On this side of the relay, on the bottom, you will have uh, the inputs for activation of these two relays. So you will uh, again these relays they come in a different you know variations. Uh, this one is on the simple side. And uh, some of these kind of like a more complex or kind of like a high end relays, you want to say they're still about they're still all under 20 bucks. But still, some of these come with like three LEDs over here and then a bunch of other uh, terminals that you don't even want to touch. Uh, it's really cool that it has an LED. Uh, oh, most of these relays have an LED is that, you know, when you turn on the ignition, that the relay box is actually getting power and it's ready to operate the relays. So um, most commonly, uh, the connections on the bottom of the relay will look something like DC negative and DC positive. And the way I uh, these need to be connected is DC negative will go to the ground. You can wire that directly to a battery negative terminal or you can wire it to uh, your car's body. Make sure you remove the paint if you choose to go that route because you want to make sure you're having a good connection. DC positive, I also, I recommend connecting that to ignition wire. Uh, that's a 12, not to spark plug. <laughs> I want you to connect it to a 12 volt ignition power source. Uh, just find a, somewhere to tap into that system and uh, you will be able to connect that wire to DC positive. So when you turn on your ignition, when you turn the key into position two, I think it is, or position one, whatever that is, anyways, your relay box will have power and it's going to be ready to get activated. This little LED is going to go on and you're going to be almost ready to start the car. The other uh, two important uh, terminals on the bottom are going to be channel one and channel two. So channel one, there's a... Uh, I personally recommend connecting a pump relay wire. Pump relay is a uh, fuel pump relay on the 300ZX is located in the uh, driver's side uh, footwell. I believe it's next to the left foot and it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's a blue relay. Uh, you can actually look it up exactly where it's located, exactly what it looks like on Google. Just type 300ZX fuel pump relay and you will see exactly where it is and uh, you're going to see the wire that I'm talking about. So that wire directly from that relay, it would get connected into channel one. For channel two, I specifically recommend using um, uh, some kind of output from the ECU. It can be a five volt output. It can be a 12 volt output. Any positive voltage should be enough 
to trigger the second relay. So uh, again, I strongly recommend using the ECU. Some guys like to use hop switch to activate the second channel. I don't recommend um, using the hop switch because that's kind of a, not too precise of a technology. I want to make sure that the ECU has full control of the um, fuel pumps, of the primary and of the secondary stage pump. So uh, I recommend wiring things up this way. So to kind of go over is that when your car is off, everything is, if, if everything is wired correctly, everything is going to be off as well. Once you uh, turn on your ignition, your, you turn your key, the ignition goes on, uh, this LED is going to light up, your relay box is going to be ready for activation. When that pump relay kicks in and supplies power to channel one, your primary pump is going to get activated as well. So this input will activate your primary pump. I feel like that's the best way to set it up. You can actually uh, get the channel one. Some people like to activate channel one just with ignition, but what that you know what that does is your channel one will your your primary pump will always be running when the ignition is on. The reason I like to activate uh, the primary pump with pump relay is that pump relay is actually being controlled by the ECU and not by the ignition circuit. Why this is cool is that because you can, uh, through ECU, you can select how long you want the, the fuel pump to be primed. Uh, the duration of that, you can actually turn priming off entirely if that's something you want to do. Or another cool thing that you can do is um, uh, when you're setting up the uh, fuel base pressure with your uh, fuel pressure regulator, you can turn the pump off, you can turn it on uh, through the e ECU interface. It's, I mean, I personally, I want to have, I want to give ECU complete control of all of the, uh, all of the car circuits. And that's probably the best way of doing so. Uh, so yeah, so directly from pump, uh, from fuel pump relay goes on channel one when the car when the conditions are met the primary fuel pump gets activated and you get i mean you can at least drive the car around everything's going to be fine uh the secondary uh the channel two that would be activated by ecu uh, ecu's output when specific um conditions are met and i can't really tell you exactly what conditions to set those up for that's uh, that's something your tuner does uh, a lot of tuners like to um activate the second pump uh, based on boost some guys activated on some other parameters uh, whatever that is i'm not a tuner again I'll let your tuner figure that out but yes but i definitely recommend giving ecu control of that second channel as well because that second channel input when it gets activated your secondary stage pump goes on and you have that extra fuel supply that you need from your second secondary pump I honestly hope that this is <clears throat> somewhat understandable. I'm like the worst teacher ever. So uh, if um, uh, if this is confusing, uh, you know, post it in the comments, let me know. And uh, I can maybe send you a uh, kind of like a schematic specifically to answer the question that you have. Or I can, you know, just send you a message. If you want to give me a call, do so as well. Uh, but this is probably the best way I can explain as to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, as to how to uh, wire things up. But just please make sure you're using at least 12 gauge wires over here for a pump supply. Uh, over here, you can use 18 gauge wire. That's not a problem at all. These circuits require almost no current. And uh, um, just, yeah, so 18 gauge wire is perfectly fine here. Another cool thing is that by wiring up things this way and using a relay we are completely bypassing the factory uh, fuel pump controller uh, that thing tends to be faulty with aftermarket pumps and uh, eventually it's just not sufficient for an aftermarket to pump control and uh, they go out of business really quickly with even if you install the Walbro 255 in there uh, setting everything up with a uh, kind of like a separate aftermarket relay you're bypassing the, <clears throat> the factory fuel pump controller you're making the whole system a lot more reliable you're still giving the ecu complete control of your fuel pumps of your fuel supply and i feel like this is the best way to uh, wire things up 
uh, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, let me know in the comments, let me know in the messages or on my website, give me a call and I will be able to address those as well. And uh, if you need better schematics or better explanation, I would be happy to do so. Uh, and again, thank you so much for the feedback from, from the previous video. I really appreciated what you said and uh, I appreciate the rest of the support as well. And uh, thank you guys and uh, have a good one.